it's your nation it's your favorite nurse jazz i'm back today with another video so today's video is actually going to be a q and a while i try all of the new fancy products so you guys know that i absolutely stand rihanna like i love her so much so every time she drops something like i am in that thing once i got my hands on the concealers and the powders and everything that was my shade i was all about it so i'm going to be using some of her products while i answer a lot of the nursing questions that you guys have for me over on ig as well on insta so yeah just continue to watch so i'm going to leave all of this stuff that i am using in the bottom bar the description bar whatever it's called and i just figured that i should answer some questions for you guys because i haven't done a q a in a long time and since you guys really like my last chit chat get ready with me i figured why not do one and answer some questions? So I'm just going to pull up these questions. I asked questions on my YouTube post and I also asked questions on IG story. So if you're wondering why I didn't respond to those questions on the YouTube post, it was because I was filming this video. So hope you guys understand. It feels like something in my eye. So we're gonna start with Instagram. So the first question says, do you agree with others that experience nurses eat their young and how you do with it. How do you deal with it? Um, I have actually seen um, some nurses be really mean to new grads. Um, a lot of the older nurses actually don't like orienting new grads simply because nursing turnover rates are like really, really high. And um, they're like, I'm gonna give you all my time, my energy and my knowledge and you're just gonna leave. But then there are some nurses who are older nurses that are just mean, old, and bitter, and they hate their job, and they hate new grads. I haven't had anyone personally try to treat me like that, and I don't know if it's just because of my personality. Like, I'm like, look, you're not gonna talk to me like you don't know, lost your mind. Um, but like I said, I have witnessed it, um, and it is just a culture that is in nursing that definitely needs to change. Um, not saying that it is right or anything like that, um, because it's definitely not. And I believe if you are dealing with that, say if it's like your preceptor and um, they're treating you really bad. Now it's a difference between constructive criticism and actually somebody treating you like crap. But, um, if they're giving you constructive criticism, take that because they're teaching you and you can learn a lot and you will, you will actually get a lot of information from like older seasoned nurses, things that you don't learn in textbooks. But if they're legit treating you like trash, it's something you need to address with them first. And if you feel like you're getting nowhere with them or if things get worse, I would definitely go to my manager. And if your manager is not dealing with it i will go above their head and if you feel like it's not worth it i wouldn't even just stay at that job because um i wouldn't deal with nobody treating me like crap and no one else should deal with it either so that's that's my two cents on that have you ever had a med error and if so how did you handle it so i've actually never had a med error let me let me knock on wood uh but I have had things like um, accidental needle sticks and that actually happened before I became a nurse. You can't even really see this color. Hmm. Um, and like I said, that happened before I became a nurse, but it really sucks and I was really pissed off about it. Um, but knock on wood, I have never had a medication error. I have caught medication um medications that weren't right but I've also thought a medication was ordered incorrectly that wasn't um I feel like in that case if something doesn't look right to you or if you're not familiar with something then you definitely should um double check get someone to come in and double check with you question it um yeah that's definitely what I would do now I have administered a medication and then like five minutes later the doctor discontinues the man I'm like well look he already got it or she already got it and they're like it's okay and I just write like a nurse's note like administer medication doctor came in seen the patient five minutes later and doctor called in in order to discontinue the man and things like that but I have never actually given the patient the wrong man or given a patient the wrong dose of medication um I think 
God. Um, my next question says, do you always speak up when you see a nurse does something wrong? Example, break sterility. Um, like if it is a sterile field and it's an emergency and somebody drops their hands below or touch something that's accidentally not supposed to be touched, I am not going to say anything because at the end of the day, you're trying to save somebody's life. Now, if I see somebody like intentionally doing something to like harm a patient, yes, I'm going to step up because if it was my, um, my loved one or if it was me, I always think about if it was me because people are so quick to be like, if it was your loved one, how would you feel? No, if it was you, if that was you on the table or in the bed or on the flow, how would you want somebody to treat you? So I always say if it was me, I wouldn't want anyone to do something that could potentially cause like more harm to me and then I will say something. But if it is an emergency and we're coding you, um, I guess I should always, I should reinforce if you're new to watching this, I'm actually an ICU nurse. So if we're coding you and for some odd reason somebody doesn't put sterile gloves on and they just have regular gloves on when trying to put a tachyderm over the central line that the doctor just dropped. I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, how could you not have sterile gloves on? I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Like, bro, save this person's life. Get the tachyderm on, get the presses going, let's go. Like, I'm trying to keep you from dying. I am not worried about if sterile gloves were on your hands while you're trying to cover up somebody's central line. So, um, I think in that instance no I'm not gonna say anything um, but if I see somebody like doing something to put a patient in harm I'm gonna say something because how long did you wait before applying for nursing jobs and what was it like I actually applied for my well I didn't apply for it but I went and talked to the um, the DON of the ICU before I even became a nurse before I graduated um, if you are new to my channel I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me say this, but um, I actually started working on the same unit that I did my ICU clinicals at. So, um, yeah, I was trying to make impressions. I was trying to talk to whoever I needed to talk to once I realized that's what I wanted to do. And that's how it was. And, yeah. Every job after that, I just apply to a job. Whenever I want a job, a new job, I just apply. I don't you just apply like any other job. Um, Indeed, you can put your resume on Indeed also. This question is, are you thinking of having your own practice in the future? And if so, where? No. <laughs> um, at this current time, I am not thinking that I will actually open up a practice. Um, it just is not my goal. Like my goal is not to have my own like clinic. Uh, that's just not I will tell you guys my future goals as I get closer to um, the end <laughs> but as of right now no that is not my goal to have a clinic so question says what to study before intern nursing school love your hustle by the way so um, you definitely need to go pre-nursing so you have to look into a school that offers uh all the prerequisites that you need for nursing school you need to find the nursing school that you actually want to go to um or that you plan on applying for because every nursing school has different requirements um, some schools actually want you to have a ton of classes before you enter and some schools don't it just all depends on like i said the school that you want to apply to and the area that you are in if you're going to go into a BSN program um, if you're gonna do ADN it just it, it just all depends on what you're gonna do but definitely you know you're gonna have your typical A&P micro psychology um, sociology what else did I take math um, college algebra statistics which I actually didn't have to take statistics until I started my BSN program. The question says, does your school assist in finding preceptors and how did you find them? They do and they don't. And what I mean by that is they want you to talk to doctors that you work with or get recommendations from people that you work with. I'm new to the area, so I was telling her like, uh, we have a, a preceptor coordinator or a clinical coordinator or whatever she calls herself, I don't know. 
um and she's like you know if you can find somebody let me know if not let me know and then she'll give you like all of these options of people who are already in their database but the whole entire database is not available to you she sends you the select few that she wants to send you based on where you're located so my preceptor i i did not find her on my own um they actually helped me find her and then I emailed her and was like, hey, my name is Jasmine. I'm a student at such and such university and I um, need clinical hours. <laughs> Are you willing to accept students for the uh, spring semester? And then she responded back to me and was like, yes. And that's kind of how it worked. And I already need to find a preceptor for next semester. But I'm like, bro, I'm struggling with this semester. I don't know if I'm going to make it. But um it'll be the same thing because i don't know anyone here i don't have any connections like i these are people that these people grew up with and the doctors that i do know they're all specialty doctors <laughs> so i can't follow a specialty until the last semester so i can't follow like cardiology um a pulmonologist or like anything like that until my last semester so i'm like okay well then i don't know no doctor so yeah and even in the emergency room because there's a doctor i wanted to follow in er like i can't follow him until the last semester either so yeah that's kind of how that works it's a little frustrating and it's a i don't know it can be a, a tricky situation but um, i'll probably do a whole video dedicated to that don't worry and i'm gonna start using some of this fenty stuff first of all i need to prime my face um but yeah that's what we're going to use today. These are the YouTube posts. So this says, do you, do you have any videos on how to get A's and A and P and micro study tips? Um, no, sorry, I do not. Um, microbiology was super, super easy for me. I, I loved micro. Um, so I didn't have any issues with that class. It was super fun. A and P, I feel like it's just all memorization. Like, I don't know. I felt like. I don't know. You just have to learn. Print out like blank copies of the body or whatever you're studying, the muscles, the nerves, whichever one you're covering at that time, and just learn those. How are you affording MP school? I took out student loans. Um, I have a video about that as well. Um, and then my hospital also offers tuition reimbursement but i can only submit it after the semester is over so yeah that's kind of how i'm paying for nursing school, um mp school what are the pros and cons of mp school girl i gotta do a whole video on that and i'll probably do a video on that after i finished my first year um because right now your girl is struggling um in the 15 foundation i am i think i'm 410 okay so this is my Texas color <laughs> and this is my New York color <laughs> so when I was in San Antonio I was shade 430 I had to go pick up 410 um, a couple of months ago because 430 is way too dark and it's just because your girl don't get no sun down here so mm -hmm. are you taking any vacations this year uh, yes I plan on going to New York um, and I plan on going to Philly in June um i want to go to canada this year and i want to go on a cruise or what i have planned for the year am i going home this year um i want to go home to see my niece graduate and that is also in june i don't know if i'm going to make it down there um to oklahoma but i am going to try it says did you have to take a hesse exit exam um no i didn't i had to take a ati exit exam so I did not have to do HESI. I'm sorry, I can't give you guys any advice on that because I didn't have to do HESI. How do you deal with nurses eat their young mentality? I touched bases on that already. I'm in LPN school, going back to school for my RN. I worked in a hospital for a few months and the older nurses on the floor are so mean and hateful, not willing to teach. Um, and it's always the black nurses. Um, I don't think it's just black nurses because I work with white nurses, Mexican nurses, Asian nurses. I feel like some of the older ones, like I said earlier, they're just stuck in their ways. They don't like teaching. They feel like new grads are kind of a waste of space and you can't really change their opinions. And 
find somewhere that you love to work and the people that love to teach and yeah what tips can you give to get a's in classes i have picmonic and quizlet and i study about four hours daily oh hunty are you in nursing school um if you're in nursing school i'm gonna definitely say four hours is probably not enough time <laughs> and i'm just being real like um if, especially if you want A's in nursing school I was not um, a straight A student and I'm not a straight A student in NP school either I feel like um, getting all A's is great um, but it requires a lot of time a lot of dedication and studying four hours a day is just not going to be enough um, I would say one thing you didn't mention on there is study groups. If you are, I don't care what kind of school you're in, um, not even just nursing school, but study groups sometimes are like your best friend because you get somebody else's point of view, somebody else's studying habits, and you guys can like quiz each other and then it lets you know if you really know the material. Um, I'm not saying that you have to have like a big study group because, uh, no, um, but like maybe two or three people um definitely would be my suggestion um is this the right color yes this is 380 um and this is the concealer i didn't want to go super super light because that is just not me um i mean i like like concealer don't get me wrong but i didn't want to go like super white and 410 i feel like is a little too dark to me under eyes so The next question is the same study habits and what helped you and what did not i don't know i felt like i utilized everything um from like reading my textbooks like not reading them word for word but covering the sections that we covered in class um one thing i probably should have done was try to go over the lectures before we covered the topic so that way as we're going through lectures the material is not new to me and if i'm confused on anything that will be the time to ask yo this concealer is so bomb like whoa it just blends out so freaking pretty i know i just got real live real quick but oh y'all this concealer is so freaking pretty. This video is all over the place. Trying to do your makeup and answer questions probably wasn't such a good idea. In my head, it was great, but now that I'm doing it, sis, it's hard. <laughs> Before nursing school, did you know you wanted to be in the ICU? No, I did not. I actually thought I wanted to be labor and delivery. And then I went to clinicals and I was like, hmm, nope. Um, tips on working 12 hour shifts at night and going to school in the day house way <laughs> um i need a little bit more clarification in that question but if you are working 12 hour shifts at night and you are in like nursing school and if you're working like as an aide i would definitely say make sure that um like if say if you go to school monday through thursday try to do your your work shifts like friday and saturday night or thursday friday and saturday night um because if not like switching those days over it's going to be really really hard like it's very hard for me to switch my shifts over it's the hardest thing ever um and then you're not going to have a lot, a lot of time to actually study so make sure that studying is going first i got the fenty powder and banana um this is just going to be for like my under eye I set my foundation with um, an actual face powder. I never bake, guys, because, child, it started looking real. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, it starts looking real cakey, and I don't have the time. Um, shit, I got too much stuff over here. If you wasn't a nurse, what other profession would you go into? Um, so I was actually going to go to cosmetology school if I did not get into nursing school. And I was going to focus on doing hair. Um, not so much makeup. Like, I love makeup. But, um, I don't know. I just wouldn't be, like, a legit, like, full-blown makeup artist. 
but I was gonna go to cosmetology school and then and now if I went when I went to cosmetology school I definitely would have opened up my own salon so yeah what are your thoughts on the F&P job market saturation that's funny oh my gosh that's hilarious so I'm tired of people talking about okay let me finish the question before I get into this spiel um what are your thoughts on the F&P job market saturation? Do you worry about not finding a job after graduation? And why don't you like psych nursing? Okay, so um, as far as F&P saturation, there is no F&P saturation. There is such a high demand for nurse practitioners because a lot of people don't want to be doctors these days um, because the cost of being a doctor is like expensive. You could spend anywhere. First of all, this powder makes me want cake. Why does it smell so good? Ugh. I don't even know what it smells like. It don't smell like cake, but it makes me want cake. It smells really delicious. <laughs> but anyways, so a lot of people don't want to be doctors because you're spending anywhere between like three to 400 grand, 100 grand, let me reiterate that, to become a doctor and unless you go like a specialty sometimes that is not worth the the debt in turn they a lot of clinics utilize nurse practitioners and pas and that's why there's such a high demand for them because there are so many people that are living longer and um there are it's just a really high need for providers because the providers that we have there's just not a lot of them and then you have a lot of people that end up retiring and things like that so in hindsight there's not an oversaturation of MPs the thing is there is now social media so where you weren't once we're not hearing about people furthering their education to become nurse practitioners there's just some more attention to it now but there is not an oversaturation and that's why if you go on like indeed or you go on monster and you just look up nurse practitioner jobs you will see there are tons of them especially psych nursing because people don't want to deal with psych including me not necessarily deal with it but i don't want to specialize in it psych requires a lot of patience and it requires um knowledge that these people are not in control it is just very hard for me to talk to someone about taking better care of themselves and then they do good and then they just since they start feeling better they stop taking their meds and then you kind of start back over at point one um and it's just not something that i'm interested in i usually do very well in psych class it is just not something that i want to spend it can it seems like it would be very draining and it's not something that i just want to spend the rest of my life caring for every single day i appreciate those who choose to become um psych mps or do psych nursing it is just personally not for me um just like labor and delivery wasn't for me like i just was not about looking at vaginas all day not that i don't mind taking care of an lmd patient every once in a while but i just don't want to do it every single day so that's that's kind of my spiel is there oversaturation no is there a lot more attention being brought to the profession yes so <laughs> i don't i don't know i just i hear that so much and i'm like do you guys really know that it's not just like people say there's an oversaturation of nursing but then every unit you go on is short staff so where's the oversaturation i need to know because when i'm taking care of three patients i'm trying to figure out where the rest of these nurses stay I just graduated nursing school with my BSN and know that I want to continue on to grad school eventually. I was just curious if you had any struggles getting accepted into an MP program after nursing school. My GPA dropped significantly. I don't think it really has to do with your GPA. Um, I think your GPA plays a role, don't get me wrong, but it has to do more with your references. Um, I actually found out your references is where most people actually get turned down because sometimes you ask people to write references for you and they will recommend that you actually don't get in and you can't see your references before they are submitted so make sure you're getting good references you do some volunteer work if that is required and I mean I wouldn't say go back and repeat a nursing program course 
to get in. Um, and some people, some schools require the GRE to get in. Make sure you score really great on that if you have to. Study tips, already did that. Have you ever taken two science classes at a time? Yes, I have. Um, not including science courses, do prereqs play a part in nursing courses? Prereqs are like the building block. So you learn your basic anatomy and physiology and you will continue to add on to A and P every single semester. Psychology, sociology, those are building blocks for mental health um, and psych nursing so though like everything plays a, a role so yes they they do college algebra I hated it do I use it no do I need to know how to add subtract multiply divide yes um, lastly your comparison between nursing in Texas and nursing in New York I'm actually in upstate New York so it's small it's a podunk town it's not really a teaching hospital so it's a little less well not a little it's a lot less acuity this question says speech class anxiety tips taking two to three courses in the summer and did you take an interest exam for your BSN? So I took the T's. Um, I think everyone, well I don't want to say everyone. Um, I took the T's test to get in. It was just like basic math and reading and what else was it? I don't know. I can't legit even tell you guys what the tease was I legit paid for it showed up missed my first appointment because I left my ID card at home rescheduled for the next day showed up and took it first of all this foundation I mean this concealer and this powder is everything uh, I did that and then it was not I mean it wasn't bad like I said uh, taking multiple classes during the summer I've done that I've stacked a lot of my classes just to try to hurry up and get my prereqs done because I kept having to redo my prerequisites because I kept moving. And like I said, every school requires something different, so you need to be aware of that. Tips, make sure you are organized. <laughs> get your life in order. Right now, my life is in shambles and it, it shows. And my organization is actually on point. It's just that, honey, these classes are killing me. Um, 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 um. Oh, speech class. Girl, I hated speech. Um, I think that was one of your questions. I actually really hated speech classes. As loud and outgoing as I am, I despise people staring at me while I talk. And that was a class that I actually could not do online and I was mortified. Um, but practice in front of your family and get your um like cliff notes down so like if you're doing a presentation on i don't know a book that you read write down like little notes on a note card if that is acceptable and don't try to remember things word for word because then you'll stumble but just make sure you hit all those key points that was how i got through my speech class and it was absolutely horrible do you miss oklahoma um I miss my family um, and I miss being home because I always feel comfortable at home like home is home um, do I miss living there no do I miss the drama hell no uh, do I love Oklahoma yes do I ever want to move back no <laughs> you guys probably think I'm fucking crazy how do you find a way to be a mother wife while in school doing YouTube and being a nurse? More importantly, how do you make time for yourself? I don't make time for myself. My time for myself is doing YouTube. <laughs> and I actually really, really, really enjoy it. And that's why I continue to do it. I make the time by doing what I can do when I can do it and not feeling bad when I can't do stuff. This is my time to myself. Um, I try to work my work schedule around my school schedule and it is absolutely tough and it is absolutely killing me right now um it's been very difficult i'm only three weeks into the semester and i've already had like two breakdowns plan on having more children someday no me and my husband talked about it like three years ago um so three years ago i wanted another baby and it was because i did not plan on going back for my masters at that time and if i would have stayed in san antonio I probably wouldn't have went back for my MP. I don't know if I've ever told you guys that. Um, but yeah, 
I was very happy with doing what I was doing <laughs> when I was in Texas and then I got here and I was like hell no Jasmine can't do this for the rest of her life um I always kind of figured that I couldn't do it forever but it wasn't really like something I really contemplated until I moved here um so uh yeah so I'm back um, the Fenty liner is so bomb. So I could not put on my lashes and talk to y'all at the same time. So I'm back with my lashes on and while they're drying, um, I guess we'll finish the topic of kids. So yeah, the answer to that is no. About three years ago, we had brought it back up or I had brought it back up because I was thinking about having another one. And my husband just was like, financially, it's not going to make sense. And because as an adult, those are conversations you need to talk about. Like, you gotta pay for daycare and at that time we were in Texas and I was still working day shift so um, he's like you know we gotta pay for child care and you know our kids had just got out of daycare and that was a big burden lifted off of us and he was like you know it's kind of putting us right back to where we were and it made sense so I was like okay like I wasn't heard about it or nothing like that it was just like a conversation that you have when you're an adult let me reiterate that because a lot of people these days they're like just popping up pregnant and having kids so they don't actually sit down and talk about it me and my husband have been together for a very long time so um yeah i was like okay so that was kind of the end of that and then like a year later he brought it up but once something is out of my mind it is out of my mind and i was like nope <laughs> answer to that question is no we do not plan on having any too much time so yeah, that was it for those questions. And um, yeah, that's legit yesterday. I was like about to just say, fuck this program and be done with it. Uh, <laughs> I'll go into more <laughs> details. Um, it's probably more details in that vlog. Um, we're just gonna talk about Fenty products now. <laughs> the foundation is still very drying but i like it and i like it because i have oily skin concealer bomb af do you hear me over here shook fussy i girl all the lip balms glow bombs lip glosses what is these called gloss bomb bomb um this banana powder smells so good and it set my under eyes beautifully let's set this face Ew. <laughs> Fenty face is a lit do you hear me I love it okay let me do something to this hair and I'll be right back <laughs> so just to kind of sum up what I am feeling about these products so first of all I wasn't like the biggest fan of the foundation just because sometimes you can see a lot of my texture but I think it was more so because of my skincare routine um, and now that I have a color that works for me here it's everything um I think the concealers knocked it out of the park it is not matte at all it has this like it kind of reminds me of the NARS um creamy concealer because it has like this radiant glow but it's not like super shiny and it doesn't look like there is going to be any like oily crap sitting up underneath my eyes because since I already get super super oily it can get real bad real quick depending on what concealer I use so I think this concealer absolutely killed it it blended out flawlessly like it just took away all the like darkness under my eyes because your girl has been super tired with school lately and the powder is just everything I went with banana it is not an all over color powder for me um, but I think it set my under eyes perfectly and it smells so good um, and Fussy lip gloss is always like it's just been bomb since it came out. So I think Riri killed it. 
now she can give me an album like we can be back on the same page okay so uh i hope you guys enjoyed this i know the q a was kind of all over the place because it's really hard to do your makeup and answer questions okay so i hope you guys enjoyed it i know this video is super super long so if you made it this far make sure to thumbs the video up and to subscribe before you leave and make sure that you go follow me over on ig and i'll see you guys all in the next video bye